Hello, my name is Steve. In this training video, we're going to be taking an image out of our sample folder. It's uh, two different colors and it has two different fonts. One is connected script and these fonts are at an angle. So I'm going to show you, you know, how we can clean this up using Graphic Tracer. Uh, once we have loaded our image, it moves us over to the next button here. It says separate colors. A color picker, if I use the automatic, if I click on that, it automatically detects the colors that are part of that image or you can use the color picker tool to select colors that maybe graphic tracer didn't pick in the automatic mode but at any rate we have brought uh, the image in and we have separated the colors uh, the next thing we're going to want to do is uh, we're going to want to process this image now by processing the image what that does is it converts everything in this image to pure color the pure blue and the and the red and you can see if I come in here close you can see we have various shades of blue as we look at, at the pixels very closely when I come through and I click process it uh, eliminates all those and converts everything to pure colors now if I want to see my original bitmap I can hold my spacebar down I'm now going to go through though I've separated my colors the colors that are part of my graphic and I'm ready to, to vectorize this image. So I come over and I click Create Vectors, and Graphic Tracer has just turned that uh, image into vector, and you can see what our initial vectorization is, which is pretty decent when you compare the low resolution image that we started with, but it certainly isn't perfect. You can see the contours are irregular, and we've got letters that are kind of rough a little bit, but if you were using that very small, you know you could probably get away with it on some things but we want this image to look perfect whether it be blown up the size of a billboard or reduced to the size of a, a small imprint on the crest of a shirt or or even imprinted a promotional item with that logo so the next thing we do is we've created vectors we're going to begin by cleaning up the text we're going to move from the create vectors over to the text tool i click on the text button and we're going to start with the word tiny now, if I click on the T, you can see I've selected that. I'm going to hold my shift key down and I'm going to click on the I, N, and the Y, like so. And I'm going to come over here to the option where it says identify font and replace. Now, Graphic Tracer can identify over 100,000 different fonts from a variety of font libraries. And plus, you can uh, add your own font collections in using the options, uh, you know, to build collections of your own font libraries and search through them in seconds. And here you can see it says straight text and we've got this straight line right here. Now the straight line is the, the baseline for my letters and it's not straight line text so I'm going to use this drop down and here I have some options. I've got angled text, vertical text, free characters, circular arc, curve, and distorted. I'm going to choose angled text and graphic tracer quickly recalculates the baseline to those letters and you can see it detected the angle of the word tiny and as we go through this you can see there's helps over here in the right column you can always refer to but I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click the word next now when you look at the letters down below here there are optical character recognition I'll recognize this as a capital T I can tell because it's got the shift sign down here this next letter here it's got it doesn't have the shift sign so it thinks that's a lowercase l so I need to correct this, so I'm just going to highlight that with my mouse, and I'm going to type in a capital I. And now you can see it's got the capital sign. Now if I were to, if that were to be a 1 and I were to type in a 1, you can see it changes that to a number sign. We, but we're going to keep a capital I. All my letters are correct, so I'm ready to do my font search. So I'm going to come over to this button over here back in my font I box in the left, and I'm going to click the word next and Graphic Tracer is going to quickly search through a, a library of thousands of fonts in just seconds and it's going to build a prioritized list of potential fonts. Some of the fonts are listed in gray and some of them are white. These are fonts out of the Fonti library and this tells me the name Balloon BT Extra Bold and it tells me the library that it came out of such as the URW Sign Making Collection, the Bitstream 500, Corel Draw X4 and as I scroll down farther you can see here we've got a font showing up in green now as we're scrolling through these fonts that are in gray or white they're they're fonts that are used for identification purposes but I'm not able to replace with those but the fonts that are green are fonts that I own 
So you can see I've got Balloon BT Extra Bold. Uh, it's from one of my font collections. If I go down farther, you can see Balloon Extra Bold from the Corel Draw 9 fonts, and, and I do have that one, so I can select that. Notes my replace button is high, but highlighted. Now here you can see another font from the Canon fonts is called Stormy Regular. I click on that and you can see that's still a font that looks like a uh, correct font. There's a lot of different names for this same font. Here's a Bazooka Regular, the different fonts that match up. Now here's one here that shows up in gold. Uh, Graphic Tracer has a collection of precision vectorized shapes and if you come across these that are in gold and you don't have any fonts that show up in green that you can replace with. If I select that, you can see that is a matching font as well. And I can actually replace with that. But we're going to scroll back up here and, and choose uh, one of the fonts from one of the libraries that we have. Now you can see the original trace in the background. If I select the uh, font that, that's highlighted over here in, in red, I can actually move that with my mouse or I can use the nudge arrows on my keyboard and I can nudge these into place and make them fit a little bit closer where they belong and once I get the the letters right in the place where they belong I simply click replace and you can see here that we have just replaced I'm going to undo this so you can see this rough text with nice sharp text created from that original font and it's sized and it's spaced and it's put right back in that logo right where it belongs. So this is incredibly fast for cleaning up text in a graphic. We're going to do this same thing with the connected script style. I'm going to select that L by clicking on it. I'm going to hold my shift key down and I'm going to click on the E and the E-A-G-U-E -E, all highlights because it's all connected together. I'm going to come over here to identify font and replace and you can see the font is selected in my window. Now there's my straight line for my baseline so I'm going to come back over here to the font eye box, use the down arrow and I'm going to select angled text like so. And when I click next, Graphic Tracer is going to try and determine what letters it's going to be looking for. Now if you look here it's got a capital I you know for this right here now I know that's not a capital I so I need to change that so I highlight that and type in capital L now we have a question mark in this box because it's not sure what letter it's looking for here and it's because there's multiple letters so I'm just gonna highlight that and I'm gonna type in E A G U E like so so now it's gonna be looking for a capital L that looks like this graphic tracer is gonna look for an E A G U E when it's all put together it's going to look like this. So I come back over here to my font eye box and I simply click next. And there we go. Now you can see that it, the first one it came up with is Ariso Bold. It's unspecified font. It's not a font that I own. My replace button is not highlighted. So I'm going to go down to the next one and see if we got a match. And here's Ariston Bold from the Master Font Collection. That is a font that I own. And I'm going to simply select those letters there. I'm going to use my nudge key on my keyboard. And I'm just going to nudge that into place a little bit better. It's like so. Now notice also uh, with this font we have overlaps. You know where the letters overlap one another here. Now with those we have when we replace we're going to have Graphic Tracer automatically weld those together. So I'm going to make sure that there's a little check mark here in this little weld box. So when I click replace, I have just replaced that and you can see if I view this in wireframe, you can see it's, it's nicely welded all those letters together. So we're going to view that back in its fill. So now we have replaced the text in this graphic we have these irregular contours that we need to replace and Graphic Tracer has a feature that can recalculate and replace contours. So I'm going to select the text that we've just replaced. I click on the L, hold my shift key down and I, I clicked on the, the T-I-N-Y and we've selected those. And I'm going to come up here to replace objects. I'm jumping over this adjust shapes and going right over to the replace objects because in this uh, in this box right here we have uh, a replace contour feature. 
So if I go through and just click on this removing old contour and we do a preview, you can see that uh, Graphic Tracer does a preview. You can see the red outlines and the black outlines where it's not quite where it needs to be. So we're going to increase this. Let's go up to point five and we'll preview that again. And you can see here the, you know, how the contours measure up you know, to what we have here. Let's go down to point four and we'll preview that once more and more time until we get this just where we like it. You can see now what Graphic Tracer is going to do is going to take out the old contour and replace it with the new when I click apply just like so. Now if we want to go back up uh, and replace the next contour, let's double that, point eight, we'll preview, and that takes us out to our next contour. We've just doubled that same distance, 0.8, and we're going to click apply. And for the last one, we're going to do 0.12, and we'll preview that. We'll go out another four, like so, and we click apply, and we have just replaced all three of those contours. They've just been recalculated. We All, all we have left are these stars. And so I'm going to come over here and we're going to come to view and I'm going to use a, whole, a vertical guideline and I'm going to click right, right at the peak of that star like so. And the reason I did that is I want to do my, align, my alignment here on my star. So I'm going to nudge that over. So I've got this node and this node in line. And we're going to take this corner here, I select that, and we're going to convert that to a corner. You can see a preview right down here when I hover over that, like so. And I'm going to do the same thing over here real quick. We're going to convert those to corners. Now, green lines are straight lines and red lines are curves. If I take a red line, like so, and which is a curve, and I just double click on it, it turns it into a straight line. Now, I'm going to select that node right there. I'm going to hold my space bar down. And I can see my original bitmap in the background. So I'm just going to nudge that over just a little bit and release that. And I'm going to select this node right here. And I'm going to nudge that up a little bit like so and release that. And I'm going to take this node right here and I'm just going to nudge that down just a hair. And so I've cleaned up this half of the star. I'm going to select that half of the star just like so. And we are going to mirror that horizontally and use that to clean up the other half of the star, like so. Now with that star selected, I'm going to come over to my replace objects and we have a tool here that says copy shape to an object. And with that tool selected, I have a, a pointer here. Now anything I point at and click is going to reproduce this star. So if I hover over that star, like so, you can see it would transform that star to be just like this star over here. But I really don't want it that large. So if I hold my shift key down, it automatically resizes and I click on that and I've replaced that star. You can see how that fits against the original by pushing my space bar down. All I have left now is this star right here. So I'm gonna use my node editing tool and I'm gonna select this node right here hold my space bar down and I can just kind of nudge that and place that where I want it to be and I'm going to take this point right here and I will just nudge that down just a little bit now with that node selected right there I'm going to hold my control button down and I click this node right over here and you can see it's selected these three nodes on this angle with that angle selected I can come over here to mirror symmetrically and click on that and I have just mirrored symmetrically the angles on that star. At this point here I have completely cleaned up this graphic. You can see all of the stars have been cleaned up, all of the fonts have been cleaned up, the contours have been replaced. I can now come over here to save and at save I can either export this as an AI EPS DXF PLT, SVG, or, or vector formats, or I can export that as a, as a bitmap, as a PNG, a JPEG, a GIF, or a BMP. If you 
have any of these programs right here, we have a one-click interface to Adobe Illustrator, Corel Draw, Sign Cut Draw, Affinity Designer, Inkscape, FlexiSign, Sign Lab, RD Works, or Photoshop. If you choose any of these, I happen to use Corel Draw. So if I choose Corel Draw, I merely come over here and I choose the version of Corel Draw that I use. I click Transfer and Graphic Tracer will automatically transfer this image right directly onto a page of Corel Draw that I have open. So uh, that is how we clean up this graphic. I hope this has been helpful to you. Thank you very much for your time and come back and see us again. Bye now.